But yeah, this is a legitimate allergy towards these things. And it kind of sucks because your kryptonite is basically food. Really good food too. Not just like hazelnuts, you know? Like if it was one thing, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's easy to cut out. But multiple stuff, all types of food, you can't eat that. Yeah. It was really tough. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how I found out I was allergic to gluten, to soy. Hold up, let me get my paper really quick. Okay, here we go. Mainly gluten and soy, but um, apparently when I took that allergen test, that allergist came back and he was like, okay, soy, wheat, hazelnut, tuna, banana, cantaloupe, lima bean, strawberry, string bean, tomato, I think we put tuna, oh, tuna, yeah, so. There was just a lot of things that all of a sudden popped up out of the blue when I was still in college, and that was way back in 2017. I was a college student, and I have a history of eczema ever since I was a child. And when I was a child, it kind of started out behind my knees, behind my elbows, inside my elbows, and that was it. Then high school came and it started popping up on my hands. And I became super self-conscious. It's just a really terrible chronic thing. All of a sudden when I went into college, I was either a third year or a fourth year. I started kind of getting dry patches around my mouth. And I was like, oh man, I need to put more chapstick. And I always put chapstick on, no matter what happens, it still kind of chaps. And I thought it was because I had extremely, extremely dry lips. And then over time, like within maybe three months or so, it became to act like eczema. It was getting really itchy. It started hurting whenever I would kind of like open my mouth, things would like split open, just absolutely uncomfortable, terrible. Um, ways that eczema usually acts, but this time it was on my face. So after three or four months of changing up all types of chapstick or lip balm, I call all lip balms chapstick for some reason, I seriously thought it was because I was allergic to the specific lip balm that I was using. So I went through multiple, multiple bottles for during those months and even till now trying to find one that's still works with my skin. So eventually it got to a point where I said, you know what, I cannot take this anymore. I don't want to be putting those steroid creams on my face because it will thin out your skin. And I already am just like a very delicate creature. So I didn't want to interrupt whatever was happening on my face and all of a sudden make it worse. So I went to the doctor and they said, yep, that's eczema on your face. We need to refer you to an allergist. And I went to the allergist, they did the back test. So what they have you do is you kind of like take off everything. They give you the that doctor blouse that kind of just covers up your, your um, and only your back is showing. So they prick you with multiple allergens and they see if you have a reaction to it. And they usually wait between maybe 10 to 20 minutes. After that time has elapsed, they'll come back and then the nurse will make note of what your skin is reacting to, whether it's starting to itch or whether it kind of like starts to form like a little bit of a bump. That's how they know, or maybe it's red. That's how they know that you have some type of reaction to it. So I didn't feel itchy at all when they were doing the test, but all of a sudden the doctor came back honestly didn't like this doctor. He was way too blasé, I think that's the word for it. He was way too kind of not compassionate when he was telling me these things, which I don't expect a lot of people to, but when you're a doctor and you're kind of delivering life-changing news, I would hope that there's some kind of like, I don't know, empathy or sympathy or feeling of, okay, this is gonna be a tough journey for you, blah, 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 blah. So anyways, casually walks into the room, pulls up his paper, puts on his glasses, and he goes, all right, you're allergic to wheat and soy and tomatoes and everything else that I said at the beginning of the video. And he basically said, just don't eat, don't eat them anymore. Don't, don't eat them anymore, okay? And I was staring at him like, okay, uh, that's some pretty big news. Like." 
isn't gluten or wheat in everything? He said, yeah, you can't, can't, can't eat those. And then before he left, he was like, oh, also, watch out for soy lecithin. Because that's in everything. And I, and I sat there, my gown still on. And then he closes the door and I like put my stuff back and I'm just like, okay. I just got a huge, apparently life-changing stuff, but there was... But there wasn't like, I was so shocked, I guess I was also in a state of denial where I felt that I didn't have to take it too seriously. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just, I was in this state of denial where I was like, I can't all of a sudden just cut off gluten and soy. First of all, one of my favorite, favorite foods in the world is Italian food. That's pizza, that's pasta. Um, and then I'm also, I absolutely love, love almost every type of Asian food. I absolutely love Asian food. I'm, I'm a Filipino. We use soy in some of our in our dishes, but I mean, come on, sushi, Korean food. I mean, Japanese food that with like ramen and sushi. Korean food with Korean barbecue and also ramen and a ton of these things. So I was in a state of denial and went home, and I think. I would just kind of set it casually and then I continued doing my normal day-to-day -day lifestyle not really acknowledging that I was allergic to gluten and soy. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a denial phase. I don't know if anybody else has gone through that before because it's so, it's seriously such life-changing news. If you have kind of gone through that little denial stage, uh, let me know in the comments below. After a while of still continuing my diet, nothing was getting better. And so I said, okay, fine, let me do one at a time. And I started cutting out gluten and eventually soy and eventually tomatoes. And my skin still is not perfect today. There's things, there's a lot of allergens and a lot of things and foods that I, and environmental things that just set me off. So I'm never going to have consistently beautiful skin, but I am always, always working towards it. But that is my story on how I found out I was allergic to gluten, soy, and tomatoes. If you're interested in learning about how I was able to adapt my lifestyle, go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I will be providing more content based on either recipes or tips, advice, things that I wish I knew. Because it's been about three years, three to four years, since I found out that I had to make that lifestyle change. And it was not quick, it was not overnight. It took years and it is taking years for me to figure out what I actually can eat, what restaurants I can even go out to, which honestly is not a lot. But I know that there's other people out there who might be struggling with that as well. And I kind of wanted to create a little community here of people who are going through that same struggle and kind of asking each other what works best for us. Let me just say that you need to see your doctors first. I This isn't... A channel where I intend to diagnose you. If any of you are going through it right now, just know that if you're having breakdowns, that's completely normal. Um, it's huge. You gotta get rid of all, basically like for me, it was 70% of things that I ate. And it was hard because, you know, it was a huge change for my family too. I couldn't just eat what they would eat. They had to learn my recipes if they wanted to cook for me or if I wasn't able to cook for myself. You know, it was just a lot of things that would happen that a lot of things would happen where occasionally I would look at myself and all and I was breaking out and I would just feel absolutely horrible. Even if I was eating the best diet ever, it was still terrible, horrible feeling. So if you're going through that yourself, just know that you are not alone and you can always talk to me. Uh, message me on my Instagram at M-I-S-S underscore underscore national. So if you're interested in learning more about how I was able to replace these types of foods, what my favorite types of replacements are, probably if you want to see some recipes, which I'm very excited to share with some of you, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.